Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate working of a 4 quadrant chopper. And trust me, after watching this video, you will be able to analyze the operation of a 4 quadrant chopper on your own. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you will be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get started. So, this is the circuit diagram of a 4 quadrant chopper. The name itself gives you a clear indication that it should be operating in 4 quadrants of the voltage and current axis. So, how does that happen? Basically, we are considering an RLE load. So, so uh, we will be uh, explaining the circuit by considering only four cases and uh, each of them will clearly give you an understanding on which quadrant it is actually operating. So there's something called convention that we need to follow. So if the current is flowing through the load in this particular direction and if the voltage polarity across the load is plus and minus in this particular fashion, then the voltage is also positive, current is also positive. So this is very important because the nature of quadrant that it is operating will be decided based on this. So let's get started. Let us assume uh, when the each of these cases should be analyzed. So at the first place when switches CH1 and CH4 are turned on, how does the circuit look like? It looks something like this. So CH1 is triggered, CH4 is triggered. Current starts flowing from the DC supply in this particular direction, in this particular direction, in this particular direction. And the inductor that is there in the RLE load starts charging with a polarity plus and minus. I am emphasizing on the inductor because it plays a very important role while charging and discharging. However, E will also be considered based on the requirement while explaining I'll show that so the basically the output polarity will be V out in this case and current flows through this path current flows through this path and returns in this particular fashion so what does this convey current flows in the same direction as it was according to our convention through the load and the voltage polarity is also plus and minus in this particular fashion so that means it is operating in the first quadrant because voltage is also positive current is also positive so this is the inference output current is positive output voltage is positive and first quadrant operation is achieved now what I'll be doing is I'll turn off CH1 alone how does the circuit behave? So CH1 is alone turned off and CH4 will still be conducting. The circuit looks like this. This is CH4. It acts as short circuit because it is triggered. According to the inductor, it does not allow sudden change in current. So previously it has charged it plus and minus. Now it will reverse its polarity such that it ensures that the same direction of uh, flow of current will be there. And uh, that is also according to the property of Lin's law. So it flows in the same direction in this particular fashion, in this particular fashion, in this particular fashion. And since minus is directly connected to the cathode terminal, of diode D2, diode will be forward biased and acts as short circuit, so current will be flowing through this particular direction. So, as a result, so if you carefully observe, the current is still positive, it is flowing the same direction as it is according to our convention, but the voltage is zero over here because this is basically short circuit, isn't it? No other elements are there. So, if you take a multimeter and measure between these two points, the output voltage will be zero because it is a short circuit. So, the inference is output current is positive. Output voltage is zero, so this corresponds to first current operation. So zero uh, does not signify anything, so we will be considering respective to that current that it is supposed to operate. So case two, what will happen when I am turning off, turning on CH2 alone? So when CH2 is triggered, so it requires supply, isn't it? Now the RLE load that is there will act as a supply for turning on CH2. If you're directly connecting the supply, DC voltage source according to the circuit diagram, it comes through CH1, isn't it? So there is no direct contact of CH2 with the DC supply. So that is why EMF that is the battery that is used will basically act as supply in order to trigger CH2. So I am triggering CH2 through gate pulses but it also requires anode and cathode voltage. How is it provided? It is provided through EMF E. So that is why E plays a very very important role in these type of circuits. So consequently what happens? The inductor had previously discharged it. Now again it will start charging with a polarity plus and minus. Current starts flowing due to the battery that is there and it flows through this direction. It flows through this direction. Since minus is connected to the cathode terminal of D4. D4 also conducts and acts as short circuit and current flows through this path. So what is that we are trying to infer? With respect to load, if you see, this is the load, isn't it? So the current is flowing in the opposite direction and uh, that means that the current is negative and the output voltage is zero. So this basically corresponds to second quadrant operation. So as I told, Previously output voltage was zero, but I told it was first quadrant. Here also output voltage is zero, but I'm telling it as second quadrant. So the reason is very simple. Based on the quadrants of operation, we can assume that zero to be positive or negative. It doesn't mean that zero signifies only a positive value, isn't it? So based on that, we can conclude that. So how am I trying to say? Because let us look into the next case, which is continued and that will give you a clear picture. 
switch ch2 is turned off how does the circuit look now so the energy that was previously stored in the inductor will reverse its polarity plus and minus previously it was minus and plus it will reverse its polarity because current still still flow in the same direction as it was originally flowing and as a result d1 is forward biased because plus is directly connected to d1 and it uh, flows through this path and it flows through this path and it flows through this path and minus is connected to d4 and it flows through this path so uh, d d4 was forward biased because of the emf that is there and uh, what is that we can conclude from here so if you carefully observe v out is basically at this point if you are taking the voltage it is basically the battery that has uh, the voltage and uh, the sum of battery as well as the energy that is stored in the inductor previously so that will be the total energy across the output so that is the output voltage v out is equal to e plus l into di by dt so that is basically positive value that is what i am trying to say and uh, output current is negative because it is flowing in the opposite direction output voltage is positive hence we will be saying it is operating in second quadrant so that is where i told when the output voltage was zero it corresponds to second quadrant because we are trying to analyze the operation as when it will operate in the second quadrant so i hope this concept is clear now what will happen when switch ch2 and ch3 are turned on so this is our case 3 so the dc supply will act as an energy source for ch2 and ch3 and current starts flowing through this path through this path it acts a short circuit so it flows through this path it flows through this path inductor that is there in the load will start charging with a polarity plus and minus it flows through this path it flows through this path and returns to the dc source so what does this mean the output current is negative the output voltage is also negative that is minus and plus isn't it so output current is negative output voltage is negative so when both the values are negative it corresponds to third quadrant operation isn't it so once this concept is clear case 3 now i am going to continue this so i'll turn off only ch3 how does the circuit behave when that is happening so this is ch2 so the energy that was stored in the inductor will basically act as energy source so it basically reverses its polarity ensures that the current still flows in the same direction it flows through this path it flows through this path and it flows through this path so if you carefully observe the voltage uh, and current polarity output current is negative and the output voltage is zero because these are basically short circuit elements so there is no uh, elements that are there and if you measure the voltage between these two points it will be zero because this is actually a short circuit so third quadrant operation is ensured so i hope you're getting the clarity so the if you understand the behavior of an inductor the entire circuit will be very easy to analyze isn't it now let us consider our fourth case which is the final one i will only turn on ch4 so what happens in that case and i'm also considering one important thing i am reversing the battery polarity so this is very very important because ch4 should be turned on isn't it this is ch4 switch that is used so in order to turn on ch4 you need a battery that has a polarity plus with respect to anode so that is why i am reversing the polarity of the battery with respect to the circuit so if you ask me how you can do it there are various techniques that you can do uh, when there is a battery that you can reverse its polarity uh, through uh, different types of relays that are used nowadays so based on that you can create a logic using a plc and turn uh, the ch4 on by reversing the polarity of the battery so now the battery will this is basically the load so battery will now access energy source uh, it will start flowing in this direction it will start flowing through this path minus is directly connected across d2 and it flows through this path in this particular fashion so the inductor starts charging with a polarity plus and minus so in this particular fashion and the output current is positive because it is flowing through the load in this particular fashion and the output voltage is zero because it is a short circuit so it ensures that it is operating in the fourth quadrant so what happens now if i turn off ch4 also so the circuit looks like this freewheeling action takes place the reason is very simple the inductor that was previously charged will reverse its polarity ensures that the current still flows in the same direction minus is connected to cathode of d2 so d2 is forward biased plus is connected to anode of d3 so d3 is also forward biased current flows through this path 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 and it returns through this path so what is that we can conclude the output voltage is negative if you are considering the overall output voltage that is minus and plus with respect to the load rle load that we output voltage is negative 
and the current is still flowing the same direction as it was originally and it is with respect to the load it is positive isn't it according to our convention so the output current is positive the output voltage is negative and this ensures that it operates in the fourth quadrant so all the four quadrants we were able to analyze isn't it so what is the overall summary this is how it looks like ch1 and ch4 should be turned on ch1 should be turned off and ch4 d2 conducts in this particular fashion so this is basically the summary of all the four quadrants of operation if you understand and this particular chart over here if you try to understand this this is more than enough you will be able to analyze the operation on your own so the sequence should be the same if you cannot randomly go to the third quadrant operation you cannot randomly go to the second quadrant operation uh, because you need energy stored in the inductor in the previous cycle so based on the requirement you have to do it so this is how we will be able to analyze all the operations with respect to each and every quadrant so i hope you were able to analyze this in a much simpler way as far as possible so if you have any questions questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video meet you guys in another video thank you